everybody. <laughs> hey everybody, it's me, Claire, at the Academy of Model Aeronautics, and let me be the first to welcome you to AMA Junior Camp, our very first virtual camp experience. I am so excited that you're here today. We actually have over 600 signups, so this is going to be a pretty big summer camp, and I am totally jazzed about that. Now, if you're watching live, it is Monday, July 6, 2020 at 11 a.m. Eastern time, and we are going to be fielding your questions live. Now, I can't see your questions, but my friend Kyle, who is over um, across the building from me, he's actually going to be fielding your comments and questions. So if you happen to have any questions as we do the build today, actually all week, um, <laughs> he will be able to help you out, and I'm going to guide you through this build. I am so excited that you're joining me here today, and I'm sure you're all excited to finally open this up. I know I am, even though I packed like hundreds of these, <laughs> but I'm excited to open it up. I'm so, so excited that I get to do this part of the experience with you guys. So yeah. with parental permission, if you haven't already opened your box, go ahead and find um, a grown up or yourself to open your your flight kit. Claire, can you hear me? Okay. We're going to get rid of that knife there. Oh my gosh. Look at this. Not only do we get an issue of Model Aviation Magazine, which is a great magazine. I love it. We have this letter from our friend Kyle right here. That's us. <laughs> and here are all the projects. Oh my gosh. Here they all are. One, two, three, four, five. Bonus project. I'm so excited right now. <laughs> all right. So we're going to set our project envelopes aside for now. And we are going to get this open. This is the um, supply kit that you we'll have everything that you need inside of it so we're going to set that down we're going to put our box to the side for now and we're going to open this up look at all this good stuff all right so we're not going to need our pencils just yet nor the t nor the string there's a lot of good stuff in here i'm so excited for you to see everything not the cork not the protractor just yet. We will need our tape. We'll need our tape for now. Not our scissors. Not the tissue paper just yet. Not the glue stick or our straw. Oh, looks like all we're going to need for right now for this kit is our tape. So I'm gonna put everything back into the box. We'll get to see what all this stuff is later on in the week. So just keep everything nice and compact and keep everything together so you don't lose it throughout the week. I don't know about you guys, but this box reminds me of a personal pan pizza box and it kind of makes me hungry. <laughs> all right. So we are gonna open up project number one. Well, Claire's opening that. This is Kyle. I'll just say hi, very, everybody. We're excited. Well, Claire can't well hear me. So I'll try not to talk over her. <laughs> All right. So what have we got here? Project number one, paper airplanes. So we're going to set aside our project envelope. But before you do that, there is a little tiny envelope inside. So we want to keep that for our project. So this per first cover sheet it will show everything that you need to know, especially for grown-ups, for the parents that are out there watching today. We have all of our goals and objectives. We have how to engage with this project um, and ways to help your child engage with this uh, project and some guiding questions to think about when you are building and flying this, this very, um, very rudimentary, simple model airplane. So model airplanes are really cool and exciting. And paper airplanes are especially exciting because no one actually knows when they were first made. 
a lot of people can trace that um, origin back to China. So paper was invented in China back in 500 BCE. And soon after that, origami was invented. And I don't know about you guys, but I actually really like origami. It's all about making little creatures and things out of paper, like paper cranes, birds. You see I'm naming a lot of flying animals, right? That is where the first paper airplanes came from. And you know, a lot of kids build paper airplanes, just like you guys. Um, eight years ago in England, a whole church was being renovated and they found hundreds of very early paper airplanes that were built um, about a hundred years ago by some school children. And these things were really cool. They were made out of paper and old pen nymphs. That's the tip of a pen that people used to use to write with. They are very different from the pens we use today. They found hundreds of these. So kids had a great time building and flying these, maybe when they weren't supposed to. <laughs> but the paper airplanes we're going to build today, their, their origin, their design actually can be traced back to Jack Northrop, who founded Lockheed Corporation, which you've probably heard of. He used these paper airplanes, well, similar paper airplanes to, um, to figure out how to build full-scale aircraft. You'll find that a lot with model aviation, that full-scale aircraft has been inspired by a lot of ways through model aviation. So we are going to get started with this paper airplane. I'm pretty excited about this. So we're going to get our little envelope and we're gonna open that up. Let's see what's inside. It looks like we got some paper clips. So we're going to set these aside just for now. We're going to use these a little bit later. So you can set aside your instructions sheet. It has lots of good stuff on there, including challenges. Now, you'll see if you got the flight pack in the mail, you'll see that you got multiple copies of the paper airplane. And that means that you can go ahead and build this with your family, with your younger siblings, your older siblings, anybody that's at home with you right now can build a paper airplane with you, or you can build multiple ones yourself and, and challenge yourself to fly them all day long, which is probably what I'm gonna do after we're done going live. So I'm gonna set my extras aside and um, my friend Kyle, I'm pretty sure he has a paper airplane in his office, so I think he's going to be building one as well today. Oh, yeah, he does. Yay. All right. So Kyle has a paper airplane as well. And I also want to point out to you guys that this paper airplane design, I actually got this from Seth Margolis, Director of Education over at the Museum of Flight in Seattle, Washington. That's one of my favorite museums in the whole wide world. And I highly recommend it if you're ever out there in Washington. So let's build this the world's greatest paper airplane. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to fold it in half vertically. And I'm going to slowly do this so that we can, there we go. We have that overhead shot there. So we are creasing the paper. There we go. My friend Kyle has it going. Perfect. We're going to unfold it and flatten it out on our table. And then you see these lines, they're kind of hard to see on the camera, but on the, let's see, maybe Kyle can show them. Well, if you have, if you've got a flight kit at home, you will see the dots and you will see that it says the number two on either side. So we're gonna fold it down just like this, following our guiding lines. And if you need to turn it around, that's okay. You wanna get nice crisp lines on this. Okay, so it looks a little bit like a house right now. And then we're going to flip it over and fold it on this dotted line that's going across the paper. Just like that. There we go. And now we're gonna flip it back over. This is gonna happen a lot. We're gonna flip it back and forth. And this is also kind of what um, origami is like, where you have to flip the paper around, you have to shift the orientation a lot. And so we're going to fold it in half, just like this. And we are going to fold 
on the dotted line that says number five on both sides. Well, Claire's folding that. Some of the uh, smaller envelopes are in the larger envelopes, so they're kind of hiding. Um, so double check before you throw those so away. We have that. And now, the next step, we are going to fold it down on the dotted line. This part is a little bit more difficult. We're going to fold it on the dotted line that says number six on it. And you'll notice that our logo is starting to show up. I gotta catch up on either side. You see, you have AMA Junior Camp, just like that. Check that out. Now, you might notice that it's coming apart a little bit. That's okay. We're gonna take our tape that we got in our flight kit. And for those of you at home that didn't get a flight kit, a flight pack, this is just regular tape, it's nothing special the usual kind of tape that you would use for things around the house. And we're going to put tape right here near the nose of the aircraft lengthwise. And then you are going to take the paper clips that you got in your flight pack and you're going to put one right on the nose like that. I'm going to start a second one for you guys, just in case anybody showed up late to uh, the camp experience day. I know it's kind of early in some parts of the United States. For us here in Indiana, it is 11 a.m. And so I know that out in California, it's 8 a.m., so it's a little early. So I'm going to start a second airplane for those of you who might have had some connection issues or need time to catch up. So we're going to start again. Just going to set that one aside. So I'm going to take... Here's my sheet, and thankfully, a lot of us have extras, so I'm going to, oh, I didn't, see, that's why I'm going to do a second one, just for you, because, you know, sometimes we do have computer issues. I know I've had a lot of computer issues lately, so I'm going to start over again, and so I have a new sheet, a brand new sheet right here for you guys, and I'm going to start by folding it in half. And I don't know if my friend Kyle has extra airplanes over in his office. I do, I do. You can also, you can also follow along by um, downloading all of the materials. And you can even get the lesson plans off of our website if you didn't happen to get a box in the mail. Most of the things that came in the box can actually be found at around your house. I actually found most of the stuff around my house at home when I was getting ready for camp this weekend. So don't worry. Don't worry if you didn't get the box. You probably have most of this stuff already. So I'm going to start over. I have already folded my paper airplane in half. And now I'm going to flatten it out on the table. And it just smooth it out. And I'm going to do step number two, which is holding each corner down just like this and you'll see that there are dotted lines on your paper now there are obviously lots of different ways to make paper airplanes there are tons of different ways to make paper airplanes, but this is my particular favorite because it it's really easy for one. And for another, you end up with a blunted nose on your aircraft. You see that? You see how it's blunted? It's not pointy like a lot of paper airplanes. This is because, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I have gotten hit with a paper airplane before, and it doesn't feel very good. This way, it's a lot less... It makes it safer for the rest of the family. <laughs> oh, me too, Judy. I love making paper airplanes. This is one of my favorite projects, actually. This is one of the projects I brought with me when I moved to Indiana to work here at the AMA. I brought this project along with me because I thought, you know, I think kids are going to really like this. If everybody's caught up, I'm going to keep going with my paper airplane. How are we feeling, you guys? 
Are we good? See, it looks like everybody's pretty much caught up. <laughs> I'm just going to assume we're good to go. <laughs> yeah, so. I'm going to flip my airplane over. I'm going to fold it down. Now, when I'm building this airplane with kids in real life, in person, I like to say that this stuff kind of looks like an envelope. Like when you get a birthday card in the mail or maybe a Christmas card, it kind of looks like an envelope, right? Like something fun that you get in the mail. And so next up, we are actually going to fold down number five, just like this. And this is at an angle. So this can be kind of difficult because it's kind of a sharp angle on our airplane. But thankfully, we have these little dotted lines all along it so that we can follow along really easily. And then we're going to fold it again. just like this, a nice sharp um, fold. And as you can see, I'm pressing down very hard on, so that it stays. Now, there is an extra step that I like to do on this paper airplane. It actually was omitted from the instructions, but I like to include it because it, it does help keep it together a little bit better in my opinion. So you see this little triangle here on the bottom? What we're going to do is fold it up so that it kind of holds in the other two points. There's no dotted line for this. This is an extra step I'm going to throw in there for you guys. And I kind of think this looks a little bit, I don't know what this looks like. It kind of looks like a dog. <laughs> See, my friend Kyle is showing you guys how to fold it there just because he has a little bit, his lighting is a little bit less harsh than me. So um, we can, there we go, perfect. And so the next step, we are going to fold it in half just like this. And see, Kyle's Kyle's jumped a little bit ahead because he's done this a couple times. He know he knows the process. <laughs> and so then we are going to fold on the dotted line for six on both sides, so that we can see the logo for AMA Junior Camp. Look at that, AMA Junior Camp. There it is. Pretty cool, right? Looks good, huh? And now compared to our first airplane, you see it's a little bit more contained than the other one. But you know what? This is a great opportunity to experiment. So we have two different airplanes, two slightly different airplanes. And that's a great thing to um, talk a little bit about when it comes to creating prototypes for airplanes. So. When engineers are designing new airplanes, they're ch they always change little tiny things, things that you almost might not even notice if you're not working on the airplane yourself. So when we do go ahead and fly these, we can take these two different designs and see which one is better than the other one. Now, we don't want to forget to put on our new, our second airplane, our paper clip for weight and some tape to hold it all together. Another person that I didn't mention earlier who used paper airplanes a lot in the early days, his name was Sir William Cayley, and he was actually the first person to figure out the four forces of flight. Have you guys heard of the four forces of flight? I'm going to tell them to you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so the four forces of flight are, of course, lift, weight, drag, and thrust. William, Sir William Cayley was one of the first people to figure that out, and he used paper airplanes to figure that out. So with our airplane right here, we can kind of think about all the different four forces of flight. So we have weight, which is some, what we ended up doing with our paper clip. Lift, of course, is going to be generated, well, not generated, but manipulated using our wings. We are the, um, the force of thrust because when we throw our airplane forward, we are creating that energy. Well, we're dispensing energy to make our airplane fly. And of course, drag, we're going to see comparatively which one of these aircraft has more drag. Now, my best guess is going to be this one right here because it does have these extra flaps hanging down. But we'll see, huh? 
<laughs> All right, my friends, so what we're going to do with our airplanes, the most important thing about building a paper airplane, of course, is how to fly it. The best way to fly your paper airplane is to hold it right here on the bottom, right where that bit was folded up there. I'm gonna hold it for the overhead camera as well so I can kind of show you a little bit better. Um, let's see, I have a camera above my head to show you guys, but I don't know if our camera is connected any longer. That's okay. <laughs> so, oh, there we go, perfect. So I am holding it right here I'm pinching it right there, and it is roughly more or less in the middle of the airplane. So you can see where I'm holding it with both air, both aircraft. You have our paper clip, we have everything ready. And when we go out to fly this, or fly it indoors depending, you're going to hold it up about shoulder height. I'm holding it shoulder height for me, which isn't very tall right now because I'm sitting in a in a desk chair. But if you if I were standing up, it would be at about shoulder height. There you go, perfect. And um, you're just gonna toss it forward gently. This is not a hard toss. This is not. There's not gonna be a lot of strength there, and that's because for one, paper airplanes are pretty lightweight. They're just paper and a paper clip and some tape, right? And so you don't need a lot of strength behind this. If you throw this airplane too hard, it probably won't fly particularly well. You wanna be gentle with it. You also wanna be in a space that has relatively low amounts of wind. So a good place to fly would be indoors if you have permission. <laughs> I know all the parents out there are like, no, no, Claire, don't have them fly indoors. Please don't do that. Don't worry, moms and dads and grandparents. Kids, ask for permission first before you fly your airplane indoors. If you are not allowed to fly it indoors, I recommend heading outside to fly it. And I would recommend flying it outside if there isn't a terribly large amount of wind. You want it to be pretty calm outside. Here in Indiana, it's a pretty nice day, even though it's getting a little hot out there. I think I'm probably going to fly indoors because it's a uh, air conditioned, <laughs> but it might be nice where you are. And so I would say, go ahead and fly outdoors and, you know, think about the direction the wind is, if there is any wind and try different ways of flying your airplane, try flying your airplane into the wind or against the wind. And you can tell that by either, if you're facing the wind, you feel the wind on your face, like, like a fan, right? That means that you are facing into the wind. Now, if you feel the wind on the back of your head, that means you are facing you are facing with the wind. So you are facing away from it. So try flying your airplane different directions depending on the wind and see where that goes. You can also try different um, places of flying your airplane. A lot of places do have playgrounds open now. So you could always head to the playground and fly your airplane maybe off the top of the jungle gym or off the top of a slide. If you happen to have a second floor in your house, you could fly your airplane off the second floor and see what happens there. <laughs> that sounds really fun, actually. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and fly these in here, right here in the room, <laughs> in the studio that I'm in right now. And so I'm going to toss this. It's gonna go off camera, unfortunately, but we're gonna see, I'm gonna see what happens and hopefully it'll turn out all right. And I, I'm pretty sure Kyle could probably fly his airplane in his office right now. Oh yeah, we'll, we'll try it out. <laughs> Unless he's already flying. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna first. toss mine. Here we go. Oh hey, that flew pretty good. Cool. Awesome. Right. <laughs> let's try this out. We ready, guys? Now, let's see how Kyle's does. Oh. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna fly my second plane now. Oh, that one flew way better. I know you're just taking my word for it. <laughs> hey, look at that, J.O. Kyle Kyles. That was great. So you want to fly your airplane very gently. You don't want to throw it too hard, okay? You want to just gently toss it away from you. And um, another great place to fly your airplane, actually, now that I think about it, is a hallway. So if you have a nice long hallway at your house, Try flying your airplane in the hallway. Other fun things that you can do with your paper airplane, if you have to have a hula hoop at home, try flying your airplane through the hula hoop. 
Or this is another really fun thing that I like to do. Take a big piece of poster board and cut out circles on it. Have someone hold it up for you and try throwing your plane through it. It's a lot of fun, but just try not to hit them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. See, that's why we have a blunted nose on this airplane. <laughs> All right, guys, that's just about it for the first session of AMA Junior Camp this morning. I'm so excited you are here with me and my friend Kyle to build the world's greatest paper airplane. And again, it, today is Monday, July 6th. It's about 1130 in the morning here in Indiana. And we're going to be coming at you guys again this afternoon at 2 p.m. Eastern time. We're going to have a great conversation with my friend Mason Hutchison. So be sure. Oh, my gosh. That's amazing. <laughs> That's so great. I'm so glad to hear it. You know, if you guys want to take any videos of you flying your airplanes, definitely take a video and send it to me. My email address is education at modelaircraft.org. I would love to see your flight videos. Anytime you do any one of the projects this week, definitely send it my way because I would love to see it. That is so awesome. All right, guys, again, 2 p.m. Eastern time, we're going to sit down with Mason Hutchison, who is a pretty cool guy. I'm pretty excited. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you guys all later. Bye.